ladies and gentlemen, from the New York Times, December 21st, 2009. Studying the workings of young minds and how to teach them. There's an article on this. Get this. In a typical preschool, uh, children do very little math. They may practice counting and occasionally look at books about numbers, but that's about it. Many classes devote mere minutes a day to math instruction, or no time at all. But recent studies, uh, recent studies have found far less than most children can handle, and not nearly enough to prepare those who, deprived of math-related games at home, quickly fall behind in kindergarten. All right. So they say we need to teach them more math. Quote, once that happens, it can be very hard to catch up, said Julie Sarama, uh, once we let them fall behind. And she works in this place. She says, quote, they decide they're no good at math. I'm not a math person, they say, and pretty soon the school agrees and the parent agrees. Now, that's, that's correctly diagnosed here. But listen to some of this other stuff. Listen to what they, that's just, they're, they're diagnosing the problem correctly. But where does the problem come from? Um, now, you know about the crow epistemology. You can glance and, and see uh, things instantly. So they actually do this with preschoolers. They waste time. Um, they're trying to teach them numbers, okay? Now, what I did in my preschool was I showed them the numbers 1 to 10, and one of them had one balloon, and two had two balloons, and, and then after about three or four days of going over this, and you offer them you know, bribes some from the auction, and if they won't do it, then you let them go play, but they don't get anything. They get no prize or auction thingy. And so they, they're very motivated. And within three or four days, you can teach them the numbers from one to nine. Um, and it, these are three-year-olds I was dealing with. It was very easy. It just took a few days. Listen to the nonsense that they're doing to try to get kids to learn numbers in school nowadays. They flash this card, and it's got either three dots or it's got four dots. Uh, and then they say, ready kids, ready? I want your mind to take a picture. And they show the card and then they hide it again. They say, how many dots were there? And everybody disagrees. Oh, some say there's three, some say there's four. She says, okay, let's try it again. The lesson is intended to teach a skill called subitizing. C-U-B-I-T-I-Z-I-N-G. Now that's nonsense. To glance and see three items and to be able to not have to count that's th the crow epistemologist. Everybody has the ability to handle around five things. And these kids are not going to benefit in any way from having this nonsense happen in their classroom. The idea, says the, the Dr. Sarama, is to get them to recognize quantity, to say, I see three, not by counting, but by instantly recognizing how many there are by sight. Why? What pedagogical end is that? Now, this is a good school. This is a school that actually teaches math, okay, compared to schools that don't teach math. This is ridiculous. What you should do is teach the kids the number digits, 1 to 10, and teach them how to add them, and then later on teach them how to subtract them, and then he can go on to the, be the age of 4. Oh, my God. Um, now, it goes over some research that shows that possibly... The kid uses a different area in his brain for letter than from the sound of the letter. So the visual letter and the, the hearing are not fully fused, they think, maybe till about age 11. Now, even if that were true, it still wouldn't give you any hint about what you should do in the classroom. Your job in the classroom is still to get the child to know the letter and the sound. He's got to be able to see it, and he's got to know the sound. Now, you can say oh, the neurons in his brain don't link up till he's 11. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. You've got to teach him the letter and the sound. You see the fancy kind of nonsense that, that people are paying themselves because people will go to any lengths to get their child an education. And when you've got uh, the schools in such a bad way, just about any crackpot with a half-baked theory can sound pretty good. And these people sound pretty good compared to the public schools. And it's nonsense. There's no reason to have this kind of stuff affect the curriculum in any way. So here we're seeing the best schools, the better ones, the ones that are actually teaching stuff, are going off track with nonsense constantly. And they're constantly uh, uh, being distracted by some new finding, which is irrelevant to pedagogy, to the curriculum. Should be.
and this is a good school and uh, it, I can't find the thing I had that it's in you know, a different part of the section of the paper I guess and it talked about how is in the same thing it talked about how the students don't um, have the ability their brain doesn't have the ability to um, deal with math and numbers until about the age of seven or eight and it said well the, you know there are some schools that have been finding that that's not correct but this has been reigning pedagogy this is this has been the power uh, that holds the hill for for uh, years now a couple of decades this has been the knowledge that goes in the curriculum planning centers that uh, mathematics as such abstract mathematics 2 plus 2 is too something for kids to handle until they're about seven or eight years old and we see that in the schools they actually wait so long they push it right up to the age of uh, I mean, I had a seven-year-old in my school in Utah, and we had to finish teaching her the numbers. Um, she didn't even know the alphabet. Come on, seven? Excuse me. And what are they doing instead at the schools? Nothing. It's ridiculous. And the better schools, the better schools are spending their time doing ridiculous stuff, like trying to keep, teach a kid to be able to see three pennies without counting. Wow. Um, so... Thought I would depress you a little bit with that. Happy holidays. Um, this tells me two things. One, the market is wide open for a good school. And two, it must be difficult to start a new good school or else somebody would have done it, right? Hmm. Or maybe there's just that chance waiting to be taken. Happy holidays.